Hello everybody, so today we're going to do the video that has been by um, far the most requested I've ever had. Um, so today we're going to do a video on milking the cows. So what I'm going to do, we're going to run through, we're going to introduce you to the parlour, um, how we set it up, get it ready to go. We're going to do a bit of milking, we're going to show you that, and then we'll wash out at the end. What I'm going to try and do throughout the videos, I'm going to try and um, guess as many questions as are going to come in the comments, and I will try and answer those during the video. So if you've got a question, if you watch right to the end, you might get it answered. If not, put, put a question down there, and, and if I haven't covered it, then I will answer it later on. So let's firstly, so we, I, the parlour has appeared in, in a few videos, but not, not in any length. So what we've got, it's, it's a, a GEA, or used to be Westphalia. It's a 14 unit swing over, which means we have got 14 cows up each side and 14 units in the middle. And the units, once you melt one cow, you swing it across and you melt the other cow. So it's what they call direct to line, so the milk Milk comes through the clusters up the pipe, um, through through a meter in unit here, and then it drops straight into the milk line. So, there, so there's no jars; you don't see it. The only bits you get to see is when it's in these plastic bowls. That's the only time you ever see the milk. So those those meters you see up here, they're not they're not accurate. They, there is various different types of meters available on these parlors. These are cheapo bargain basement. They give you, they call it a milk yield indicator, and it also works the ACRs, which we'll cover in a minute. So what they do, they take a reading of what's going through, and it shows up onto this screen here. That will, when it's running, that will light up, and then that will, the number will tick up as as the yield increases. It will, it will uh, measure it on there. Now there's no recording on this on this part. There's no these boxes aren't li linked back to a computer there's no PC involved it's just simple basic once it, you read the yield off the screen once you swing the arm over and it resets to the next cow it's gone it doesn't get memorized anywhere so the, so there is no computer in an office anywhere that if it breaks down you know we can we can still carry on we're not we're not tied to uh, to uh, to technology that might let us down also within these units our flow meters that decide when to remove from the cow via, via the ACRs, that is all again automatic. And once the cow is finished milking, when the, when the unit's hanging up, it will flush out. It's got what they call a flushing system on it. So every liner is cleaned and disinfected between cows, and we then start fresh every, every, for every cow. So we'll see that working later on. So we installed this parlor in 2011, where we are, the collect, what is now the collecting yard, and there's the handling there, the crushing everything area of that side. So this building used to be our cubicles. We took the when we once we built the new shed two years previous, we then stripped all the cubicles out of here and converted it into a collecting yard and a handling area. And the actual part where the milk and parlour is housed was a covered feeding area, and prior to it being a covered feeding area, it was a covered silage clamp. So we took down the silage clamp building and put up a, a special purpose-built steel frame building with enough span for the parlour in this side, uh, a holding pen over there which we've seen before and we'll look at in depth in a minute. And on that side there's a lean-to that houses the pumps and the bulk tank room and, and all the paraphernalia. So we did all this work ourselves, we did all the concrete in, we built the pit, we did not build the walls where the feeders are on. We did get some block layers in for that and they did build all the stuff in the tank room. They built all that. But we did all the concrete, we did all the drains, we did all the panelling around and the cladding of the, of the shed. We did everything ourselves it, until the actual store work went in. We had, that was an installed price, so that was all done by the company. So this parlour, the run time on this parlour up to today is 12,500 hours. So you can see where all, all, you know, we spend all our time in here. And uh, you know this is this is our main harvester. So arable farmers got their combine, does their harvesting. This does the dairy farmers harvesting. So this is where all the work happens in here. So you can see the walls. Every every cow get a feeder. And these square grey bits, if I can just go around that, that is an electronic antenna, and that works the feed in. So when a cow comes in, 
They, the cows wear an electronic ear tag like this in their ear and when they come in those those square aerials pick this tag up and it goes back to the control box and that just just feeds them so it knows we can feed individually every cow gets a tag every cow gets her own individual uh, allocation of concentrate but those feeders do not talk to these boxes so these boxes don't know which cow it is so what we do when the cows come in we just run through the procedure so the cows come in at the back so the cows come in front of the collecting yard I turn the scanning on for the for the feeder so the cows will file up through the gate open the back gate they will come in now if a cow puts her head in here looking for cake this tag she will not get any cake she can put her head in every feeder and won't get anything until she comes up until she comes up to her first to, the, to where she needs to be This area will read the tag and put out the required amount of food for that cow. So every cow down here can be fed differently. Now if this tag, see it will only feed once, it will not read again. So once the first cow is fed and she's eaten, the second one comes in and this aerial then gets triggered. Once that aerial has, has, has noticed the cow and fed, this aerial gets turned on and that one and so on. Until Okay, so once a cow, so once you've got a full batch of cows, you will then you will draw strip form it what they call form out the cow. So you take a squeeze from every every teat, and and check the quality. Then we clean the cows off with these reusable, rewashable other cloths. So we just wipe round to make sure we've got a clean, disinfected teat before we put the unit on. We will then put the unit on, and the cow then milks, and during that process. The yield will count up on here and when the sensor up on the milk line senses that the flow is dropped below a certain level that, that can be adjusted it triggers an ACR which is which is inside this arm here this is a, a vacuum ram with a rope and that then a valve up on the top shuts the vacuum and, and the rope pulls the unit off the cow and then it hangs up and then the unit hangs up and that is when the flushing takes place, which we'll, which we'll see in a bit. So once the cow gets milked, the whole side gets finished, we then come along and we dip. We dip the udders, dip the teats with, with an iodine teat dip. Now I'm, I, know, I know there's going to be questions about this. So there's two types of treatment for after milking. You can spray or you can dip. We dip with We've dipped for years and years. We did spray a long time ago, but I've been dipping for... I, spell, I've, I don't spell I've sprayed a cow for 15 years. I, I've always dipped in this parlour. We didn't put any sprayers in. And it was a good few years in the previous parlour when I took the sprayer, I actually took them out and we, and we dipped. The reason I dip, you get good coverage. Spraying, it's very... Spraying is a bit, you know, you wave it about and it might get it, it might not. Dipping, you can look, you can know you've got them. Another thing, the dip I use, if I, it's very thick. You cannot spray teat dip that is as thick as that. So by dipping it in, you get, you get good coverage. And you also get a nice little blob developing on the end of the teat, which is where the orifice is, which is what you're keeping, trying to keep clean. So the two major reasons I choose to dip. Firstly, is the quality of coverage you get. And secondly, I do like this thick, these thick teat dips. You, you, and it's just not possible to spray that. So, so those are the two reasons why I prefer dipping. Within, within, this, within this dip, there is iodine, and also within there is a liquid moisturizer to keep the cow's teeth soft and supple and in good condition. So once the cows have been milked and they're all dipped, it's time to let them go. And the, the gates on the front are controlled by these little switches on the side. So we've got one for each side. Um, so the front switches operate the front gates and then there's the same at the back for the back gate. So once the cows are milked, we just press the button. The gate is all vacuum controlled, so it opens up and the cows file out into the dispersal area. So if you've seen the housing layout and design video I did, you, you will be familiar with this part. So they, they exit and they come down this race. And in that video, I explained a little bit about the shedding gate. 
and I said I would go into it in greater detail. So now is the time that I'm going to do that. So I've got the, the tag for the imaginary cow that we have just fed and milked, and I have, and this cow is bullying. You can't see it, but but she's bullying, so you'll have to trust me on that. What we're going to do, we're going to pick this cow out. So this cow has exited the parlour. She's coming down the race, and this bit here is the aerial for the shedding gate, and just beyond is the gate. So what we're going to do, this cow is going to come down. And now she has been shedded. She's been shedded into the holding pen. So we can put as many as we need to in here. They'll just come down through. We just, as long as we program their tag number into the box, control box, that gate will pick them out. And it shuts itself after a preset time. Unless another cow is right behind and it reads her tag, it will then shut much quicker. But if there's nothing coming down, it will still shut itself when, uh, when the cow is in. So the cows then just wait here, milling around until we finish milking, and we then AI down the race. So there is an AI video I did back in the spring. If I put a, a link up there, we can go and watch that. Right, so I think that's kind of covered the basics of what we're going to do, what we're going to cover in the video. So let's get on, we'll get prepared, but there's, there's bits to do to, before we can start milking, and then we'll get the cows in, and we'll actually do, we'll show you some milking. So let's go and go in the dairy now, and we'll get ready, we'll, we'll set the parlour up for milking. Before we start setting the parlour up to work, we'll just run through a few of the. Through, through, we'll just run through the route the milk takes. So the milk comes in from the parlour into the filter. It comes along the pipeline and in, into this big filter. Uh, it's through the filter out and into this plate cooler. Now in this plate cooler, we've got milk going this way. This thin plate's in here, so the milk travels that way. Um, and in this pipeline here, it's coming in cold water from a borehole so the milk runs this way the cold water runs that way um, and then the cold milk comes out here and the warm water comes out here and that goes off to the volume washer tank so we use that water we recycle that into washing out so once the milk's cooled it comes out round the pipeline and ends up to the milk tank here so the plate cooler takes the, the, big, the biggest part of the heat out um, the cold, it, it will only cool to whatever temperature water you've got going in. So we've got the water that comes out the borehole is about 10 to 12 degrees Celsius. So that is what the milk gets cooled to in the plate cooler. And it then comes into the tank and the tank contains refrigeration units which then cool it down. Um, this is the current temperature of 3.7 degrees. That's kind of a storage. We like to keep the milk between we like to store the milk between three and a half and four degrees to uh, to make sure it's ready for the tanker to come, um, and it it gets it to that temperature within about fifteen to twenty minutes of the end of milking. Um, it needs to be below five degrees for for collection, and quite often it doesn't get to five before we before we finish milking, but we just like it to go a little bit lower just to make sure everything is is kept fresh. So the first thing we'll do we will put the pipe into the tank. So all that involves is just a, a quick quick connection here to undo. Just a little bit of washing water left in there. Take the lid off, pipe in. Got the filter drain. We've got a drain, plate cooler drain. Goes on to the, the lowest point of the plate cooler outlet. And then we take the filter out. We've got replaceable filter socks so we so a new filter sock goes on every milking and they just do one milking and one washing out on each on each sock okay so the milk comes over the outside it passes through the filter there is holes up in there that the clean milk come through down into this section which then exits into the plate cooler. Just a simple quick twist lock action to, uh, to reinstall. Right, so the next step is to prepare our reusable udder cloths. Um, what we do every time after every milk and we wash them. So we've got a washing machine out here, especially just does this job. So what we do, we take our specially prepared uh, mixing 
drum, take, take the cloths out that were washed from this morning's milking. Put them into this, it's just a cut off 200 litre drum, but it gives quite a, a wide area. So what we do now, we mix, we've got some a pre-mixed, this is water and paracetic acid mixed with uh, paracetic acid at 0.2% which is very low concentration but enough to kill bacteria and then we add to that some detergent especially formulated for these cloths so the combination of the disinfectant and the detergent gives us clean bacteria free teats ready for, for the milking process Right, so I need to find somewhere to put the uh, put the camera down, otherwise well, I can't do this one-handed. We'll, um, let's give that a go. Right, so the proportions this got to go in. Um, I got I got used the jug I used for measuring out the, the washing chemical for the parlour, and the right kind of. The amount of cloths we're using, we get almost a full jug full of water and three pumps of the detergent. And we do this twice, and that will then give us enough for uh, for our cloths. And then we just swirl it all around, so every, every, everything gets a coat with the first first jug full. Now before the second jug full we just turn everything over so that we get both sides. So we just turn the cloths over and then pour the second jug full over. So I think that then gives us slightly damp cloths that have got enough moisture on them along with the detergent to clean off clean off the teeth. If they're really dirty, they do need washing. But for just as long as they as long as they look clean, this is plenty enough moisture to uh, to get them really clean and sparkling. So before we went on to this cloth, this reusable cloth system, we were using a foaming pre-dip and wiped off with a paper towel, which worked well enough. But disposing of the paper towels was always a problem because you know they're uh, you get a lot of wet paper towel. The only real option for disposing of that paper towel is in the landfill which isn't very, it's not very sustainable uh, it just fills up bins. So we went on to this about four years ago they say these reusable cloths last between three and six months um, I just replace them when, they, when they're worn out, I don't actually know how long they do last but what I do know is when we replace them it's much less volume of, of waste going into landfill um, and it's a, certainly a big reduction in in, in the weekly disposal. Um, the, the cost of the cloths versus the paper towels by the time we put our detergent on is it's about the same. So there's no real cost benefit either way between paper towels and this. It's purely down to uh, waste disposal. So that's, that's why we go this route. Um, the most important thing about cleaning these is washing temperature. They get washed in just standard household washing detergent. But we do a 60 degree wash and uh, an 800 RPM spin, so they're quite damp when they finish. They're not they're not dry, but we need that moisture for having with the cleaning. But it's a 60 degree wash that gives us the bacteria kill between milkings to uh, to enable them to use them again. Right, so moving on to preparing the parlour. I don't think I mentioned earlier we have got a separate dump line for waste milk, be it a fresh calves or or 100 treatment, and that consists of we've got a an individual cluster and a special a separate dump line so that's that's the milk, main milk line here vacuum line and a looped dump line that discharges into a separate jar with its own pump and that that's the outlet there that goes straight to waste so any milk that's not going into the tank goes into that system and goes straight straight to waste down the drain 
and it also allows us to wash it properly having a looped a looped line the same as the milk line we've got an air injector on it that gives us a slug of water going round to clean the whole line out exactly the same as the milk line's got so to prepare the parlor for for milking basically all we got to do we just drop our clusters off the jetters ready for picking up by the vacuum rams when when we start up um, i've got bins what i put down through the center of the parlor for putting the, the used other cloths in uh, and just a couple of buckets i because i keep clean water at either end a bucket at either end for washing gloves at each end at each end of the run so you need to keep gloves clean otherwise you're transferring bacteria between cows and there's no point wearing gloves then so a bucket at each end just stick them in it's easy to keep stuff clean Right, so that's the parlour and the dairy ready for milking, so we'll go and find some cows. Right, so we're all set up, ready to go now. Dad's gone up, he's bringing the cows in, I can just see them coming down the track now. Um, so I've got one of these new fancy stick the camera on your chest jobbies, so hopefully we can, you can see what I'm doing. Because I think if I put it on my head it'll be a bit too high up for milking, because that's kind of chest level. So first thing we're going to do, we've got some fresh calvers to bring in, um, because they're in the shed separate with the feed and the calves, so we'll bring those in. Dad's got the cows almost down and then we can get going. Come on, you're not. Come on. Come on. Stay there. Right, so I've wetted all the floors just to make it easier to clean out later on, otherwise if you leave it dry it does stick. So we'll open the gate, let the first lot in. Here's the red girl coming first. And turn on the feeders and the switch up there to uh, make the scanning work. So we just go down, just take a, a draw each out of each teat. It's called uh, four milking, just to check the quality, make sure it's good enough, and that just goes on the floor. What we're looking for, just nice clean milk. If we see anything nasty, that means there's a there's an infection or a mastitis infection, and uh, we need to dump that. So it's just making sure everything's fit for uh, for consumption. Shut the gate behind the last one and clean the gloves. So clean gloves are important all the time. Back to the front to pick up our cloths, ready to wipe. All right, so like we said before, each cloth does two cows. When they're as clean as they are, you know, we're not taking a lot off. It's just taking a, any bits of dirt and dust off. And uh, two, two cows per cloth is fine in these conditions. They're nice and clean. 
we're just taking a little bit off mostly mostly what's coming off is the cut you can see the color there that's mostly deep dip from this morning so we're just taking that off that's that's what the majority of the coloring in the towels is so i've got three bins up through the center so i'm never carrying dirty ones far just chuck them straight in the bucket And then, first one on. So the cuts, there's a switch on the arm that drops it down automatically, there's no touching. Don't have to touch any buttons or anything which can get dirty and transmit, you know, bacteria, so. By not touching anything, it just helps keep it all cleaner. So the aim is to lose as little vacuum as you can and uh, just to keep the vacuum stable within the pipelines. Okay, so here you can see the uh, green light means the pulsator is running and then that's counting up in litres. And then we go back and let the next lot in. Turn the feet, turn the scanning on again, and then it reads the tag.
Hello, Blinky. Right, so now we've got the first sides finished, the second side are all going, and what we do, we dip the teats with the iodine and uh, send them on their way. And there we are, shut the gate and ready to reload. So milk flow here now, you can see it's still coming through, but it's slowing down a lot. So, and when it slows down, these two red lights at the bottom come on, and then it comes off, and the flushing will then activate on its own. To clean out the liners, so they're fresh for every cow. As you can see, it doesn't matter how it hangs, because it's injecting the water into here and just flushing this part, it doesn't matter how they come off the cow, it always drains out and doesn't get in the milk line. 
so it blows out and, uh, and blows for air through seven times per per unit and that then you can't really see but that's clean and clean and disinfected in there there's no trace of milk left so for the next cow as we swing it across for the next cow it's brand new fresh and clean and then there's no transmission of any bacteria right so we're all finished milking now we are cleaning out the milking pipelines so we run a cold rinse through first let me put a detergent wash circulating around and then we finish off with a cold rinse that runs to waste again so what we've done now we've put the put the first rinse through so while we're waiting for the water to fill for the main circulation we will drain out the filter just to clean it out make sure there's no dirt in there for the further cleaning so we'll do that now so we've got the circulation running now so it's in the, it's in the green tub it's coming up here through the fruit it's going then around the parlor comes back through the plate cooler and in into this which is then recirculating it round and this here is the the dump line outlet that's going straight down into the drain so we don't recirculate that that just goes to waste So there it is, that's a complete milking routine, right from the start, right through washing out to, uh, to the end, so everything's just draining out now. So I guess one of the questions that I haven't covered is, does this parlour freeze up, because it is quite open? And the answer is, it can do. So if there's ever a forecast of frost, I always drop these units off the jetters, and that then drains. We do get a little hang up of water in there. So we drop those down. So by spending five minutes in the evening draining everything down as much as I can, it saves freezing up. So I've never measured the temperature within the parlour, but when outside is about minus three, that's when the, uh, the flushing system freezes up. So down to minus three, we've got no issues at all. Um, the flushing system will catch at minus three. When it gets to about minus six or seven, the diaphragms the diaphragms in the in the shutoffs up on the melt line they sometimes will catch but all you need is a jug of warm water and they're going when it gets really cold about towards sort of minus 10 in the milk line there is a non-return valve and when it gets to about minus 10 it will catch that valve but it's all stainless steel so a jug of hot water on it and it's going in no time at all. So just a few minutes of preparation before a frost gets rid of any any risk. So I, I you know I've learned I've learned what to do, and it's far simpler to a bit of prevention rather than cure. So the other thing I haven't covered is what where where does all this milk go? So you've seen it being produced. You've seen on, in all the previous videos what we do for feeding and, and making silage and all the rest of that. How we look after the cows, we turn them out in the spring, you know, they graze. So where do we sell the milk that we produce? Well, it goes to make this stuff. Okay, so Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate, which if you're in the UK, you will know it. You will, you will have tasted it at some point and you know how good it is. If you're not in the UK, I'm not sure whereabouts in the world it gets exported to. But if you've ever tried it, you'll know it's good. And if you ever visit the UK and you've not tried it, have a go, because it is very good. So that's where it goes. Um, so hopefully that's the final question answered now. I think we've kind of come to the end of, of what I wanted to cover. If I have missed anything or I haven't covered anything you would like to know, put a comment down below in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And I will say thank you very much for watching. 
and we'll see you next time.